Hi and welcome back to Cheeky Crypto. My name is Nick and today guys we're going to be jumping down into the world of Bitcoin, taking a look at what's been going on most recently and what we expect to happen next. As I get into the video, if you find it useful and informative, smash that like button. I really do appreciate that. Helps spread the content out to more like-minded individuals. And if you are happening to be new or you do happen to be new to the channel, uh, then why not go ahead and subscribe by tapping the bell and selecting all the notifications. You will not miss another video update here at Cheeky crypto and if you haven't yet joined us in discord check it out guys you're missing a trick if you haven't done so already it is a fantastic community talking crypto 24 7 it's completely free and i don't think you'll be disappointed by what you find down there it's completely free and i don't think you'll be disappointed at all now let's jump into to bitcoin right a few things happened yesterday some interesting things some developments and all that good stuff we're going to be talking about bitcoin on the one hour chart today so these are the micro structures that essentially are building up those bigger macro levels the kind of things i'm talking about in this particular video um, should kind of play out within the next kind of 24 to 48 hours or so uh, we'll either see things change uh, as in the structures change into a different kind of structure uh, and uh, maybe we'll see more bullish movements or or alternatively we complete these structures that we're seeing here and we have more bearish structures okay and uh, so i'm going to walk you through what's going on using smart money concepts which is the chart that you see in front of you here and uh, then we'll go over into our elliott wave theory which is the one that's been slightly more predictive at the moment giving us our target ranges and all that kind of really good stuff okay we'll save any macro view stuff for this afternoon so if you're interested in understanding the bigger macro picture the on-chain data and where everything is kind of feeding into it uh, then and that will be out this afternoon we'll just keep this one to the micro structures for the traders out there so if you're going to be trading uh, then these are the kind of things that you need to know about in my opinion now uh, if you are trading why not check out BitGet linked in the description down below uh, there's lots of different things going on in the space at the moment everything from Binance FUD all the way through to buy bit forcing KYC BitGet doesn't require you to do KYC it's uh, my go-to platform at the moment for both my spot and my leverage trading and um yeah, you know, I haven't been disappointed at all by everything that's going on and unfolding uh, with uh, with BitGet so far. So I uh, say link description below um, it is an affiliate link. So we do how it does help support the channel if you do go ahead and sign up to BitGet using that link in the description below. OK, let's um, let's get into this. Right. Let's talk about what's going on. So yesterday, <clears throat> yesterday, we were talking about a potential move. Um, to the upside uh, based on smart money concepts and during that video I was saying that I felt that smart money concepts was missing uh, missing a beat here because Elliott Wave Theory was telling us that we had a clear move to the downside and unless we hit certain levels it had to unfold uh, and smart money concepts gave us a, a, a false flag this one right here and I was saying it didn't look like it was actually something that was going to be sustainable and what we were actually going to be looking for was a uh, potential shift and change right we're going to look to see if this were to shift back down to another change of character into bearish state and that's exactly what we saw um so it does it just kind of shows you that you need to be aware of more than just smart money concepts within this space because you can get these false flags um, and when you start taking a look at the bigger structures you can start to understand that that was never really something that was likely to occur at least very unlikely uh, as i think i was kind of articulating it yesterday so today what do we see well we can see that um at two o'clock yesterday afternoon we confirmed uh, that we actually are still in a bearish state of play we've got another change of character from the previous bullish one um, and it's an indication that without the downside was here this was an indication that we were close to the um how do I say it? We're close to the weak or strong low that was uh, labeled back then, right? So uh, now we have a weak low and we have a strong high. Uh, this is an indication that we are still very bearish based on that uh, change of characterization from bullish to bearish within our structure. Now, we do see that we are below the equilibrium. We're below the 50 EMA and we're below the 200 EMA. This yellow box area, guys, this yellow box is a fair value gap that Smart Money Concepts here uh, by Lux Algo did not actually populate which was odd um, but this is an area that I think we're going to have to at some point move up towards okay so we will grab that in the future I think um, but for now uh, it looks like we still have some volatility to be expected now we are progressing quite nicely uh, with the moves to the downside we're kind of correcting the momentum and things like that considering we're Thursday and we're coming into the weekend I'm not overly optimistic for significant surges to the upside. Um, an upside move, yes, but I'm not thinking that that's going to be of significance. And I think we're going to see a lot of corrections as low volumes uh, basically correct those uh, stochastic RSIs. <clears throat> Seem to be losing my voice here. Sorry, guys. Um, 
so we'll be keeping an eye on all of that uh, so yeah for the most part smart money concept still remains in this bearish state of play this is nothing terribly too unusual we zoom out uh, we can see that this was something that was actually triggered way back up here um, in um yeah, April, 17th of April, approximately. Break of structure to confirm it, break of structure to confirm it, break of structure to confirm it. Uh, then we had that false flag, and now we're back into this original state of play. Um, so the false flag basically was still within our structure, but we did push up more than we would normally expect to see. Um, but it stayed within its structure. It failed to break its structure. Um, and so that's one of the key things that we need to kind of you know acknowledge here. We basically pushed up higher, but not as high as we needed to, uh, to basically break through all of the resistance. By the way, guys, we can see all these red areas just up here. These are internal sell order blocks. And we know that there's a lot of selling pressure right up in here. Okay, it's not a coincidence. Um, and then we can see, obviously, we're being pushed down as well. Okay, so price is falling. Um, so smart money concepts, incredibly bearish still. We broke that low. We can get rid of that one now as well. And uh, we might as well get rid of this one over here. We don't need that either. So yeah, for the most part, um, we're in a bearish state of play. And we're looking for further downside according to... Um, smart money concepts but let's jump into our Elliott waves and take a look at what's going on so this is slightly more complex than smart money concepts it's something that is more predictive and it gives us some real good ranges which we'll talk about how they kind of you know hit target yesterday um but it is more complex so i have put together a course on this at cheeky school linked in the description below um it's, it's, it's easy to understand, hard to implement. It's probably the easiest way of explaining it. And there's a lot of rules, but once you kind of learn the rules, it's okay. Um, but obviously implementing it is slightly harder. So let's talk about what's going on. So there are five wave patterns, okay? And let me see, right? We've got five wave patterns, right? And so we have a five wave structure to the downside. And in the fifth wave movement of this structure, uh, there can be a couple of different five wave structures. Each of these should include five waves. So let me, let me get some empty space, right? So when you have a five wave structure, say it looks like this, okay? The first five waves uh, or first wave one should have five waves in itself can be a couple of different types but can be five waves in itself then you end up with the impulsive five wave structure in wave three and then you end up in an impulsive uh, or diagonal structure in wave uh, five right so you, you end up with if i delete that bigger one there you end up with a five wave structure you then have these corrections that go upwards in three waves yeah and another one over here so we call it a five three five three five it's an impulsion right so five three five three five and it's basically a five wave count right so you'd have a wave one two three four and five and inside each of these it's five waves for wave one three waves for wave two five waves for wave three three waves for wave four and five waves for wave five right now the thing that you have to understand is there's five wave structures they get nested inside our five wave count right so if, I, if we see a five wave count here we know that there should be five waves internally in each of the wave one three and fives but they nest down because inside this little five wave structure for example there should be a five wave structure and so forth right so it goes down and down and down and down uh, and so we start to understand that there's a nested structure that uh, sits within right so where does this what, what does this mean and where, where are we for bitcoin right and this is why it gets quite complicated because people don't fully understand or comprehend exactly kind of you know what's unfolding in front of them um and you know they might see like we've, we've completed our five wave structure we're going to go up now and we're going to be doing the x y and z right and they don't necessarily understand and x y z is actually a structure so that's probably not a good uh good analogy but you kind of get the idea here um uh, is that you see these five wave structures they nest inside each other and when they're nesting inside each other it's a part of a bigger five wave structure overall okay so it's complicated it's complex and it and a lot of people kind of lose track of what is going on. And it's unfortunate because it's incredibly predictive um, in terms of where we think Bitcoin is going to go if we are able to actually track all of these micro movements on these hourly charts. So for uh, smart money concepts, it's quite simple, right? You've kind of got break of structure, you've got change of character, you've got a discount area, you've got a premium area, high and low, uh, strong lows and high and strong uh, highs and, and so forth, right? And fair value gaps. It's quite simplistic uh, in how you kind of approach it. It's not very predictive uh, other than the fact that you can say you're going to eventually at some point come up to your fair value gap, right? Um, but with Elliott Wave Theory, it's a lot more predictive because it gives you very specific Fibonacci relationships into your wave counts. And like I said, the course goes into all of this in a lot more detail. Um, but what I'm saying here is that we're experiencing what I believe to be either an expanding diagonal or a... Um, ending diagonal okay and they essentially sit 
within this fifth wave movement, right? So you have your uh, expanding, which is this one here, uh, or you've got your um, ending diagonal, which is the first one. We're not doing a contracting diagonal. So uh, this middle one here, this is this is not valid for what's going on at the moment, but it's either going to have to be this one or this one over here, right? Those are the two that are currently sat inside our fifth wave movement over here. Okay, so when we take a look, we can see, if I go ahead and draw this on, we've got a wave one, a wave two, a wave three, a wave four, and we're in that fifth wave. Okay, now, so that's where we are, right? And we can kind of acknowledge what's going on within there. Now, inside of that working of that fifth wave movement, we either have the expanding uh, diagonal, or we've got ourselves an ending diagonal. We do not have a straight up impulsion or contracting. Um, so when we drill into this on the hourly chart, we can see that an ending diagonal would be made up of three waves. So it would be three, 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 right? And it's, there's no five wave counts um, other than the fact of those three waves containing five wave counts. And that's kind of where we sit, our, sit ourselves right now. So we were looking at our target range yesterday at 25,884 to 26,144. And you can see that we wicked down to a low of 25,871. Um, so we're right uh, where we needed to be. And then we kind of bounced up from there. So um, now we were looking at this as a potential zigzag in itself with our C wave. And I don't think that's now valid. I think we can just say our C wave is complete at this point. And we just got an overextension within our fifth coming down here. And uh, we can say, yep, look, fantastic, it is done. Okay, our C wave is complete. So even without those micro counts, we can just remove the micro counts. We can see A, B, and C. Uh, C coming down to slightly deeper where you would uh, than you would normally expect to see it, but for the most part, exactly where you would want it to be. Um, so we can see here that we have a wave one. Uh, then we have an irregular flat. Again, another complex structure for our wave two. We've come down into our wave three meaning we are expecting our wave four. Now wave four can, if it wants to, cross wave one. That's not a problem. Um, and we'll be looking to see if we kind of move this down quite significantly. Now, under an expanding diagonal structure, uh, we would expect wave five to be the biggest move down. Okay, so if I bring out our trend lines here and we kind of snap these on, we can see how this would be a very big wave five situation. Um, it would take us down... Uh, right into our target range down here for our fifth wave movement, potentially even lower. But in order for that to really be something that would happen, uh, we'd also need to see wave four move up quite significantly as well. Okay, so we expect a move upwards here before we move on down. Under an ending diagonal, we'd expect the same, uh, except the fifth wave might not be as uh, deep as you'd need it to be. Um, I think we're going to be experiencing an expanding diagonal. Um, I think that's the setup that is going on in here, but we'll see how it plays out over time. Essentially, the main target range that we're looking for to the downside is 24,791 to 25,418. But I would like to see this actually peak down just a fraction lower than 24,000, so around the 23,900, because that would actually tick off a few additional 1.618s. Uh, that would, uh, right here, in fact... Uh, allow us to um, basically take a look at this larger impulsions and say that they've already hit all their targets and our bigger macro piece is now starting a trend to the downside on the daily chart for example okay so although we'd see those things we'd still bounce up once we complete all of these structures we're going to bounce up in a significant way uh, we'll be revisiting you know 28 29 K Bitcoin pretty easily, I would have thought. Um, but, you know, for the most part, our trend is kind of set in stone at that point, and we'll be looking at significant surges to the downside at a slightly later date. So for the most part, everything Elliott Wave Theory here is giving us a clear sign um, that unless, of course, we break up higher than our 27,663, um, we are going to be talking about this being a trend, or trend structure to the downside um, for the most part. And obviously, we can see it's a five-wave structure within that count right in there. Um, coming down into these lows will basically trigger that with a 1.618, as you can kind of see marked out here. Uh, and again, we have more nests, right? So we can see that there's a wave one here, wave two, all of that that we've just been talking about all of this move is our wave three up for wave four down into wave five then all of that nests inside this one which is a wave one wave two all of that would be then wave three up for wave four down into wave five and you start to see this structure start to really bring us down um, and this is not major movements yet in bitcoin but this is the beginning of a trend this is the beginning of a crash in bitcoin we'd bounce up towards that 28 29k 
and then it would be just like a lead balloon falling hard. So I imagine that maybe the uh, the uh, Hong Kong residents being able to uh, buy Bitcoin and trade cryptocurrency, maybe that's the surge, right? And then, you know, institutional investors, whale investors or whatever, decide that that's liquidity to take out of the market. Um, don't know what's going to cause it, but the structures here from an Elliott Way theory and a psychology point of view are mapping out a pretty bearish structure uh, on the slightly longer term. But we'll talk more about that this afternoon as we talk about the macro structures, what's going on on chain and all that wonderful stuff. I'm going to leave this video right there. If you did find it useful and informative, smash the like button. I do appreciate that. If you are new to the channel, then why not go ahead and subscribe, tap the bell, select all the notifications. And in doing so, you will be kept up to date with everything that we do here at Cheeky Crypto. And with all that said, done and out of the way, I hope everyone has a fantastic day and I'll catch you all in the next one. We are not financial advisors, and none of what we have communicated verbally or in writing here should be considered as financial advice. It is not. Do your own research before investing in any digital asset or affiliate office and understand that investing in any crypto is risky. If you do, you need to be prepared to lose your entire investment. This video is an information and entertainment purposes only. All our videos are strictly personal opinions. Please make sure you do your own research and never take our opinions for financial advice. There are multiple strategies and not all strategies fit for people. Our videos are not financial advice.